Good evening. We thank you very much for uh, tuning in with us tonight on Facebook. Uh, just a few things I uh, want to uh, bring your attention to. Sunday, uh, we're going to be having a drive-up service. Uh, we will have a trailer, and I'll be standing up on top of it. That way, everyone through the parking lot should be able to uh, see and be able to view. We're going to have a sound system and all set up. And, uh, even going to try to get y'all to participate in uh, singing and different things. So uh, we will be doing that Sunday. Also Sunday afternoon, we need to uh, remember the shower for Cassidy and Daniel Hollifield. Uh, that'll be Sunday at 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. It'll be a drive up. There'll be some tables set up for uh, people that would uh, want to stay and uh, socialize for a little bit. And those who... Uh, might not feel comfortable, uh, you can still come driving through and they are going to have uh, takeout boxes prepared and refreshments for you uh, on Sunday. Also, uh, graduates, I have not received any information from anyone graduating this year, so if someone knows someone, please let me know because we have not had anyone uh, give us anybody's names yet. So do uh, please remember that. Also tomorrow, I want you to take time. Uh, there's going to be uh, pastors been asked to go to Raleigh. Uh, there's going to be a, uh, I guess you might call a little protest uh, up there to our governor, Brother Roy. And I hope he gets the message. But uh, it's called Return to America. And the purpose is to allow churches to get back to uh, worshiping, have their time of uh, freedom, I let them express their uh, freedom of, of being able to come to, to worship those who feel comfortable and who are wanting to come to the church to worship uh, Our governor he allows ABC stores to be open. He allows the abortion clinics to be open He allows other stores to be open and I believe that it's also very important that the church be able to uh, Voice their opinion. I mean exercise their rights You know during this so please uh, be praying that uh, something will break loose and uh, we'll be able to get inside our churches to start worshiping instead of outside or on just on Facebook. Uh, again, I want us to remember Brother Tom Reeves. He's really in the short rows now on his uh, radiation. John Sparks will be going to the end of the week to be able to uh, see what they're going to do on his surgery. Mike Willis, do remember him and Kim. They do have hospice in. He's doing a lot of sleeping, as I said last time, but continue to uh, pray for them. Remember Harold Ryan, he's been having a tough go here for the last several weeks. Also Lisa Weber, Faye Love called today and she'd like to be us to remember her. She had a test done today. Uh, remember Jewel, this is Louise, uh, uh, oh man, I went brain dead, uh, Buchanan. Uh, it's her sister. She's at Spruce Pine Hospital with pneumonia, so lift her up. And continue to remember the Iris Burleson and also the Dorothy Smith family. Uh, they passed away last week. And also remember Jeff Hughes. He'll be having surgery, uh, the way I understand, Friday on his shoulder for a rotator cuff. So these are a few of our announcements. And uh, let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to be able to speak. I thank you for each one of our members who have been faithfully tuning in, either Facebook or YouTube or ever how they can, even through DVDs that we've been sending out. I just pray, Lord, that uh, your word will touch. And I pray, God, here in the next little bit, God, that our churches all over North Carolina will be able to open up where people can come together and uh, worship. And God, praise you once again. And I do thank you, Lord, for our church. And we do lift up all of these that were on our prayer request. And I know there's many out there that are watching. They have different requests and different needs, Lord, in their life. And God, ask you, Lord, to minister to them. Those who might be downhearted, those who might be just, uh, just uh, going through a, 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 just a trial, I ask you, Lord, to just uh, lift them up. Let them know, God, that uh, you're, you're with them. God, put your arm around them. And Lord, tonight as we come to, to study your word, I pray, God, that you'd give me the words that would be pleasing to you. And I pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Tonight, we're going to be looking in the book of Mark. Mark, the 14th chapter. 
Let me get this button out of my mouth so I won't speak too long. Mm -hmm. Oh man, Mark the 14th chapter, and we're going to be looking at verse 66 to 72. And I want to talk to you tonight uh, the gift of being able to remember. The gift of being able to remember. Again, as you find this in your Bible, Mark, the 14th chapter, verse 66. Let's stand for the reading of God's holy and errant and fallible word. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And the maid saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. And he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. Then the second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the words that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crew twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereupon, he wept. You may be seated. Memory's a, a wonderful thing. Especially when you go to the mall and park your car, you've got to remember where you put it or at Walmart. Many times I've forgot and I've had to walk around and look, and even at the hospital. Memory's a good thing, you know, uh, when you do something. There's people who build things, make things, ladies who cook. They remember how to, just how much this goes to make a biscuit or a pie. And memory's also good, you know, when you have an appointment, something you got to do. It helps you to be alert and ready to do that. But the older I've got, the, the kind of the worse that I've got along in remembering things. I heard about three elderly gentlemen that went to the doctor. They were taking a memory test. And the doctor brought them all in together. And he said, we'll just take care of this at one time. He went to the first one and he said, what's three times three? And he looked at the man and the man said, 274. And the doctor just rolled his eyes back and went on to the next one. He got to the second guy and he said, what's three times three? And he looked at him and he said, it's Tuesday. And he just shook his head. And he went to the third one and he said, can you tell me what three times three is? And he said, why yes, it's nine. And the doctor was ecstatic. He said, that's great, that's wonderful. He said, how do you figure that out? He said, it's simple. He says, you take 274 away from Tuesday and you got nine. So I know if you didn't get that, you wasn't listening, and you ain't going to remember. But I, I'm here to tell you memory is a great thing in our life. I, I got to thinking about that today. Do you remember what it used to be like to sit out in the church and hear the gospel preached and the choir sing and special singers sing and people stand up and testify? Do you remember how it felt to stick your hand out there and shake somebody's hand? or pat them on the back, and even better than that, give them a hug around the neck? Do you, do you remember what it felt like, my friend, to, to be together? That's something that we don't need to forget. Do you know how it feels, my friend? Uh, do you remember how it feels to go into a restaurant? And uh, When I would go into one, you, you, you'd sit beside a, maybe somebody else from a, 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 somewhere else, and you would even talk to them. And and now you can't do that. You remember, you know, what it was to, to stand in line and, 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 and not be worried about getting too close to somebody or wearing a mask or, you know, getting in somebody's space. See, it ain't been that long ago. And folks, we need to remember that our liberty is very important. Our, our freedom is very important. And that's what God wants us to have. And that's what God wants us to be a part of is that. Remember, I, I thought about this, you know, uh, why did God give us a memory and not the ability to look into the future? A memory will help you get through tough times. A memory will help you to, to be able to, 
the call to things into remembrance that you need. It's maybe in God's word that he has showed you that, or he has either spoke to your heart or squeezed you in some way. But if he give you the ability to look in the future, my friend, it would destroy you because the things you would know that were coming up, maybe it's a something, a sickness, a death, or something would come up and you'd do everything you could to stop that. You would get in the way. So it's very important, my friend, to be thankful that we do have that, that uh, the memory that we have. I believe if we fail to remember where God has brought us from, that's why I believe we're where we're at today. I believe uh, God has allowed this to take place in, in America and all over the world because we forget. We don't remember what the Bible says. It says he's a jealous God and, and, and that we're not to have any other gods before him. And we've got idols in our house. They're parked in our garage. They're laying in our pocket. They're laying on our tables. We watch them. And I believe he's bringing back to remembrance just who's number one. He's the only one that we can call on, I believe, I know, that's going to be able to help us. And uh, it's very important that, again, that we remember. Here in this passage, we're going to see that Peter gets a, a lapse of memory. And this lapse of memory is going to bring him great pain in his life and his walk with Christ at this time. And Christians, a lot of times, we don't need to point our finger at Peter, but we need to also look at ourselves a lot of times we act like we forgot who Christ is in our life. And we need to bring it back, who he is and what he stands for in our life. I thought about this. Why, why did Peter deny Christ? It might have been he feared for his life. It might be that, you know, uh, the crucifixion was there. His mind was running to and fro. He couldn't stop it. He didn't know what to do. It might be like he found himself where he was at with these people between a rock and a hard spot. And that's where a, a lot of people are today, between a rock and a hard spot, not knowing what's going on and what to do. So today, I want to, tonight, I want to make a couple observations about what you do when you see ourselves in a fix. Just like Peter, his life was in a fix. What, what are these observations I want to look at? The first one I want to look at is this right here. I want us to look at, we need to remember who we are. We need to remember who we are. Who was Peter? He was a disciple. He was a follower of Jesus Christ. And, and that's, as you and me, we, we're supposed to be saved. We're supposed to be children of God. That means that we're a follower. That means that we have been saved. That means we are covered by the blood. That means that we are in the family. So we are his. The Bible makes it very plain. Once you get saved, you're no longer you, who you are. You're his. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, ye know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Understand, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost presides within us, and which, is, which you have of God. God has gave us this temple. The temple houses the Holy Spirit of God if we've been saved. And the last part of that verse says, ye are not your own. No longer, if you're saved, you're not your own. You are a part of Christ. You are his property. And as a child of God, no matter how bad things get, or no matter how good the circumstances might get, you're still his child. And you have to bring that to your remembrance, who you're living for in your life. But the first thing, another thing I want to bring your uh, memory to is this, is about Peter, you know, why did Peter forget? If you have your Bible still open, uh, go up to verse 54. A lot of times they, they, they preach on this. Uh, I've heard just this verse preached on right here. It says, in verse 54, it says, Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest. So that's a why I believe Peter got messed up. He started following Christ afar off. He started putting a, a distance between himself. And a lot of times that's what goes on in a Christian's life. They, they get saved and they get close to God and, and then something goes on. Uh, uh, something just like maybe this is going on right here and there's a fear that comes in, into their life and they make a distance. And that's what Peter was doing. He was distancing himself from, from Christ. We have to be very careful not to distance ourselves, but really we need to get closer to him. I mean, when people find themselves uh, starting to make a distance, they are to understand, I've got to do something to get closer to God. How do we disconnect from God? 
Very simple. I mean, we hear it preached from the pulpit. We hear our Sunday school teachers say it. A lot of times we just fail to communicate. We fail to pray. We fail to be faithful. We fail to, to study the word. We fail to repent of our sins. We fail to, to uh, uh, put Christ, you know, in our calendars. It's so important in our walk with Christ that we stay close. Because when you start dissing yourself, you're setting yourself up for a failure. And that's what Peter was doing right here. He, he was setting himself up. First, and then again, we see something else he did. Not only in, did he uh, follow afar off in verse 54, but he said he sat with the servants and he warmed himself at the fire. What he did is not just distance himself, he started surrounding himself with the enemy. You have to watch, my friends, who you keep company with. He was sitting right there with the enemy. He was sitting there with the, with the other folks that were out to get Jesus. They, they were out to crucify him. And there he stood. And it, it's, a, it's a terrible thing, my friend. If you start separating yourself and you start dissing yourself from God, you're setting yourself up again for a failure. And that's what happened to Peter right there. And, and, and hey, this, this isn't nothing new. This is happening today. This happens in the day that you are living. This is the same scenario that takes place in the day of Christians today. If you don't believe me, all you have to do is look around. What, what should have Peter done? I think the first thing Peter should have done instead of dissing himself and, and surrounding himself with the enemy, I believe he should have surrounded himself with the Lord's folks. But I know exactly what happened. I know what the Bible says. When all this took place, they all scattered. But he should have looked for somebody. Instead of separating himself and being a loner and then finding himself in a mess, you have to put yourself with godly people. That's why you need to have a godly friend. You need to have a, a godly mentor in your life that you can talk to, that you can listen to, that would give you good advice. And I believe if he had been around the others, maybe they would have been stronger and they would have stuck, to get stuck together. That's why God's people need to be together. That's why we need to come together. We become stronger as we worship also together. See, uh, a, a Christian, and, or, or but they can't, uh, what do you say? They can't uh, feed on the, the things of the earth. And they can't be satisfied with the things that the enemy's camp has. See, we're not of this world. We're against, uh, out of this world. We're against the world, which you might say. We're God's people. But what started happening in Peter's life after he distanced himself and he separated himself or started surrounding himself, what, what did he do? Look at verse 66 and let me just read these verses over again. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maidens of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou shalt wait, I mean, and thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went unto the porch, and the cock crew. And the maid saw him again, and began to say to him that stood by him, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by us said again, The preacher, surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. And he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man of whom ye speak. What happened? What happened to him? We see all the way through this, he took on a characteristic that he never had. He started lying. He says, I don't know him. I, I, I don't know who you're talking about. I'm not one of his. And, and, and it's so bad, my friend. That's what people do time and time again. They, 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 they start saying, you know, well, I don't want to be associated there with the church or something. You know, they might think I'm a holy roller. My friend, you need to stand up, speak up, and shout out who you love and who you stand for, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I, I think, you know, how many people today would be different if they didn't do these things in their life, if they would keep their prayer life up, surround themselves with the right people. It would help us to be stronger in our walk with Christ. If you just remember a few chapters before this one, Peter was sitting with Jesus and other disciples. And he said, hey, Jesus, all these boys are going to let you down. But don't you worry about me. I'm going to be there for you. And then Jesus got on him and told him, he better watch it. Satan wanted to sift him. 
And we see that's what's taking place in Peter's life right there. He was getting sifted. He was going through the, the run, right uh, through the mill right there. When hard times come, remember, you need to get with somebody you can trust. Don't let the circumstances overwhelm you, but allow them to, to help you to become strong. Help them to get you closer to him instead of further away. The next observation I want to make in Peter's life is what, how he got him back, to whom he belonged. First, we know who he was. Now we need to see whom he belongs to. It's, he's getting back on track is what I want to show you here. We need to remember, as I've already stated earlier, we're no longer ours, but we're his. Christ Jesus, again, I said he redeemed us, he saved us. We're his family. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, it says, For ye were bought with a price, as I've already said. It says, Therefore glorify God in the body and in the spirit, which are God's. Again, it identifies us. If we're a child of God, we are not ours, but we're his, and we're his property, and we should glorify him with our spirit and with our body and with our life. What made Peter's temporary amnesia go away? It's called a rooster. <laughs> he cocked a little dude. See, when that rooster crowed, Peter's memory come back. Peter's memory come back to him what was going on. Look what it says in verse 72. And it says, In the second time the, the cock crew, and Peter called to mind. You know what the call to mind means? It says, it means he remembered the words that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crowed twice, thou wilt deny me thrice. And it says next, And when he thought thereon, he started remembering, he started going back in his mind, he started going back through the, the, the pictures that uh, uh, memories make in his life and his heart. I, I believe one of the first ones that come back to his mind was when Jesus stopped by and called him to come to, to be one of his disciples, to come and to, to follow him. I believe another one was when they were in the, the ship going over to the Sea of Galilee and, and the storm came and he said, peace be still and everything stopped and become calm. I believe uh, another few were maybe when the, the miracle he saw Lazarus come forth or, or when the feeding of the 5,000, you know, that was the miracle. But men, they picked up 12 baskets of food. I believe it started coming to his mind what he had seen. Maybe the Sermon on the Mountain uh, that, that when Jesus preached, you know, how, how that come back to his mind. Or maybe even what I've just said, maybe Jesus warning him, you know, Peter, don't get too big for your britches because Satan wants to have a kid at you. And I'm trying to say in life, that's what will happen. Satan, he'll take a hit. He'll come and get you. Or maybe Peter remembered how Jesus reached down when he was sinking and he pulled him up and he put him back on the boat. I'm just trying to say he had temporary amnesia. And I want Christians to understand this. Sometimes we might get a little bit of amnesia, but we just need to look back in our walk with Christ and remember all that he has done for us. And that will get clear our mind up and that will make us a stronger Christian. That will make us a better Christian. If we'll just do that. See, see, God's going to take care of you because you're his. You're no longer yours. That's what the Bible has said. I've told you in Corinthians. That's what it says. Now make me make one more observation about remembering. We need to remember where we're headed. Just as Peter, he remembered where he was headed. I mean, all that was going on. You, you say, what are you talking about, preacher? There in verse 72, it said uh, that he called to mind. He started remembering. And then it says, and he thought upon these things. And then when he thought upon these things, what he was doing, what he had done, what's the next thing it says? The last two words. It says he wept. He wept. He come to his senses, my friend. He realized what he had done. He, he Crucifix, not the crucifixion, the conviction of Christ was upon his life. And I believe with all my heart that Peter took care of what was wrong. I believe he got on his knees and I believe he cried out to God and he asked God to forgive him. He repented of, to God of the sins that he had done. And I'm trying to say that's exactly what we need to do. When we see where, where we're headed, we're off course. We need to repent and we need to ask God, please help us. 
That's what America needs to do. That's what Mitchell County needs to do. That's what Burry Chapel needs to do. That's what every one of us as individuals need to do. When we see we are getting off course, we need to pray to God and get back on that course. We need to remember what's waiting on us at the finish line. Of all the troubles. A lot of times, you know, we get more focused on what's going on around us. This coronavirus, it's, it's real. It's a Make light of it, but that's not the, the real thing. I mean, it's not really our, our, our problem. God can take care of that problem. We have to stay focused on what God's got ahead of us. See, I believe when it was all over, you know, Peter went back there to John 14 and he kind of reminded the disciples, he said, uh, I'm fixing to leave. And man, they got all tore up. But he says, remember this. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I come again and receive it of myself, that where I am there you may be also. And Thomas said unto him, Knoweth not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I guarantee you he remembered that. Have you ever been going on a trip and you was going in the wrong direction? You know how you felt? Just like Peter did. You was all upset. You were out of shape because you was going in the wrong direction. But then when you got back on the right path, your heart got excited. You know you were going on that vacation. You were going on that trip. You were getting to that destination. You were going to that place you had a desire to go to. And Christians, that's what it's time for you and I to do. We need to focus, we need to focus on the destination that waits us instead of, my friend, of getting frustrated about the things we're facing. God's promised us a place. God has promised to take care of us. That's what Christians need to remember. You need to remember that God loves you. You need to remember that he died for you. You remember he saved you. He will remember he's going to keep you. Nothing's going to take you out of the hands of God. You need to remember he's coming again for you, whether it's through death or through the rapture. Just remember what he has already done because he is a great and a wonderful Savior. Don't let your memory go bad. Our Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight and I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. I thank you for the many times you've del delivered me because of me. And I thank you, God, for all the times you've forgiven me because of my stupidity. And I thank you, God, that you are real. And you live within my heart, my life, and you know all these other Christians throughout the world. We do pray for our nations. We pray for our leaders. We pray for the help, God, to get our churches back on go. Keep our people surrounded with your hedge of protection. Keep them safe. Keep them healthy. Be with these families who are suffering. God, these who have lost loved ones. God, these who are going through the cancer. I ask you, God, to lift them up and be with them in a special way. And again, I pray Sunday. I pray Sunday will be a beautiful day. I pray that we'll have a great service out in our parking lot. I pray, God, that everything will go just as planned. And I pray most of all, God, that you will show up but I know what your word says. I remember it. Where we're at, you're at. And I know, God, you'll be with us Sunday because you're true. And I pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.